Mina, Kanbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. To echo the exact same sentiments that I said in the other video, the preaching video that I'm releasing today, in case you just didn't watch it, don't care to watch it, I apologize for not releasing anything either yesterday or, well, I say today, today is Monday for y'all. For me, it's just kind of the end of Sunday. But I still didn't release anything either of those two days, so uh, I missed Saturday. And even though I usually publish things for one day like the next morning, I do apologize. I definitely 100% missed a day and really no good reason. Ew, I'm just undisciplined and irresponsible. That's about as brutally, honestly truthful as I can be with you. So my mistake and uh, another mistake, I will not be able to release the Donald Trump video right now because I haven't made it yet. The priority and the goal is to make it tonight. So at some point, Monday night, later on, much later on in the day, I am going to make that video, and I'm going to put it out there, so the Sunday message also will be a shorter one, not the full 30 minutes, so once again, I am sorry. Uh, messing up all over the place, but not quite as badly as King Jeroboam in Second Chronicles chapter 13. He, he messed up a little bit worse than I have done. If you go down to verse 3, I'm going to give you some context, so... The new king of Judah, King Abijah, is going up against the king of Israel, King Jeroboam, the one who took most of the Israeli tribes away after King Rehoboam did his whole thing about, like, you're asking me to be nice to you guys. Well, I'm going to be harsher than my father on you guys. He scourged you with whips. I'm going to scourge you with scorpions. So Jeroboam became the king over the majority of the tribes, and at that point the kingdom split. <clears throat> So they're not very happy with each other. And in verse 3, Abijah set the battle in order with an army of valiant warriors, 400,000 choice men. Jeroboam also drew up in battle formation against him with 800,000 choice men, mighty men of valor. So it's a 2 to 1 ratio. And in war, that equals bad. That equals extremely bad. If you're outnumbered 2 to 1, they have 2 men for every one of your guys. The chances are incredibly high you're going to lose unless you have better weapons, better armor, better strategy, a combination of all three. And sometimes even that won't save you. So jumping down to verse 13. But Jeroboam caused an ambush to go around behind them. So they were in front of Judah and the ambush was behind them. Once Now at this point, practically speaking, they're dead. They're done. Not only is it two to one. They are they are surrounded, and it was and it was an unexpected surround. It wasn't they were going into a territory they knew they'd be surrounded, and they had some strategy to come up against it. It was an ambush. So they are outnumbered two to one. They are surprise attacked, ambushed, and they're surrounded. They're closed in a pincher attack. I would dare say it would take a miracle for them to make it out of this alive. And that's kind of leading into the point. In verse 14, when Judah looked around, to their surprise, the battle line, again, it was a surprise attack and ambush, the battle line was at both front and rear. And they cried out to the Lord, and the priests sounded the trumpets. Then the men of Judah gave a shout. And as the men of Judah shouted, it happened that God struck Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. Whatever that means. How did that happen? Uh, Second Chronicles did not say, and I didn't really look into, I forget if this is first or second Kings. Um, probably first, more than likely, since it's very close to it's very close to the beginning of Judah and Israel's history post the unified kingdom. But <clears throat> so I haven't looked there. By all means look it up and see for yourself if God did anything in particular. In this book, it simply says afterwards. And the children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their hand. Nothing really supernatural or miraculous that can be derived from these verses. Then Abijah and his people struck them with a great slaughter, so 500,000 choice men of Israel fell slain. Thus the children of Israel were subdued at that time, and the children of Judah prevailed, because they relied on the Lord God of their fathers. Uh, and there was a little bit of a quote-unquote trash talking before the battle where King Abijah is like, King of Jeroboam, you have rejected God, you've got your golden calves out there, and you drove all the priests out of your kingdom, so all the Levites and all the priests of the Lord are now with me. Uh, if you're challenging me, 
You're challenging God, and that's a bad idea. He did it anyway because, for all intents and purposes, he should have easily won that battle with that threefold advantage. Quite easily. And he didn't. And that leads me to the, fi to the final point of this video. I can't prove something supernatural that happened. Maybe in 1 Kings, we're going to assume 1 Kings based on the history, that it's probably, this battle is recorded. Maybe something supernatural did happen, and it's clearly written in 1 Kings. But a lot of the times, there are going to be circumstances in our lives as believers, to those of you who are watching who are also Christians, where we can clearly see the hand of God. Like, we look at a circumstance, we look at a scenario, things work out in our favor, and we know God saved our rear ends. It was not us. And it was not natural. It was supernatural. I can't prove a miracle happened in this particular part of Scripture because it's not recorded. Like, how did God strike Jeroboam and the army of Israel? I would say with Abijah and the army of Judah. That's how God did it. Nothing supernatural, but clearly uh, unprecedented. Well, maybe not unprecedented. I'm, I mean, there have been people who have fought and won against astounding odds in the past. But when you look at something that extreme, you tend to think, ah, that was probably a bit supernatural. That was probably miraculous. God had their back. And if you don't believe in God, of course, you would say, well, they were just darn good. They were just darn lucky. Whereas we on the believing end would say, no, there's a little bit something more than that. So to the believers out there, don't be discouraged when people who aren't incredibly close to the Lord are not even believers at all question God's involvement in your life. They don't see God in their lives. If you don't have a strong belief system, you're not going to see God. So to my brothers and sisters, don't be discouraged when the people around you don't see God's hand in your life. They may not have eyes that see and ears that hear. So love them, pray for them, and don't you lose heart. Don't you be discouraged. You know your circumstances, you know what you've been through, and you know the Lord got you out. So don't give up, don't give in, and don't lose heart. Be strong of good courage, fear not, and do not be afraid, for the Lord your God is with you. He went before you, he did deliver you. So please bear that in mind uh, for current times and times coming up in the future. And thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.